ever open your inbox and it's like, bam, security alert, security alert, another security alert, 26 and 24 hours. Like, come on. Yeah. That's what we're diving into today. All those security alerts, especially after uh, your situation with Microsoft. We're going to unpack this article. It's time to be honest about security alerts by Neville Hobson, okay. who gets into why companies use such a vague language, yeah. you know, around potential breaches right. and how that actually impacts all of us. So Hobson... He opens with this uh, this scenario where he gets 26, hold on, are you ready for this? Yeah. 26 identical alerts from Microsoft in one night. Wow. All with unique login codes. It's like that they think someone's out there just like, hmm, really struggling to type an email address 26 times in a row. <laughs> is that really the most likely scenario? Well, it's interesting, right? Because what you're seeing there is companies trying to soften the blow a little bit Okay. when it comes to... Potential security breaches, right? Yeah, yeah. So they use this very vague language, downplay the risks, yeah, and it's all to kind of avoid alarming users. Right. But here's the thing, and this is what Hobson gets into, that might actually have the opposite effect. Oh, okay. Because when every alert feels like it could just be a false alarm, people start tuning them out. Yeah. Right. It breeds this sense of, Complacency. Complacency. And that's like the last thing you want when we're talking about online security. So it's like they're trying to protect us, but they might end up making us more vulnerable instead. Yeah. And it really impacts, you know, you mentioned trust. How does it impact our trust in these companies? Mm -hmm. Especially when it comes to something as important as our security, you know, our data. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It's a valid concern because when companies are constantly vague about potential threats, mm -hmm. it really erodes our confidence in their ability to actually keep us safe. We start to question, are they being upfront with us or are they just trying to sweep things under the rug? Right. You start to wonder if you should even bother paying attention to the alerts at all. Exactly. Yeah. And that's that's where the danger is. So what's the solution here? Mm -hmm. Because Hobson, he doesn't just, you know, criticize. He actually offers a better way to do this. Mm -hmm. He rewrites one of those vague Microsoft alerts yeah. to be, well, useful. Okay. And it's pretty simple. He ditches that vague, your single use code subject line. And goes with security alert. Multiple unsuccessful login attempts on your Microsoft account. Whoa. Right. See, that I would I would look at that. Yeah, it actually makes you want to open the email. Yes. But what makes this wording so much better? What's the psychology behind it? It's framing. Okay. And clarity. Right from the get-go, security alert. Mm. That grabs your attention, right? Right. It signals that this is something serious. This isn't just some, you know, notification you can just kind of swipe away. Right. And then by actually saying the possibility of an attack yeah. directly, multiple unsuccessful login attempts. Mm -hmm. That encourages you to take action. Okay, so it's like instead of just handing you a fire extinguisher, they're telling you like, hey, there might be a fire and here's how you use this thing. Exactly. And then, crucially, a well-crafted security alert's going to give you clear and actionable steps that you can take to secure your account. Yeah. So it empowers you instead of leaving you feeling helpless or like, well, what do I do now? Right. It's like, okay, someone might be trying to get into my account, but here's what I can do about it. Okay. That's good. But it's not just Microsoft, is it? Hobson, he mentioned similar experiences with, you know, other companies. Sure. And it just reminds me of this one time, Godfrey, I got this alert from my bank, right? And the subject line just said, important account information. Oh, yeah. Talk about vague. Turns out it was a routine update about, you know, some new privacy policy or something. <laughs> and like getting ready to call my lawyer and they're telling me about cookie settings. Right. It's wild how often we see this, though, right? Yeah. This kind of vague messaging, even from institutions that we're supposed to be able to trust, like our banks. And it's not just emails. It feels like it's, you know, notifications on your phone, on your laptop, everywhere. Is this like alert overload making us numb to actual threats. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Are we becoming desensitized? It really is. It's like the boy who cried wolf, you yeah. know, but for the digital age. Right. If we're constantly being bombarded with alerts for like, you know, really minor issues or even just routine updates, we're less likely to take notice when there's an actual, you know, real threat. So where does that leave us then? We've talked about the problem, right? right. We've explored a better way for these companies to be doing these alerts, but like what can we actually do about it? What are some concrete steps that we can take to protect ourselves in this like sea of digital uncertainty? Well, the good news is knowledge is power, right? Yeah. Just understanding 
how these vague alerts can create this false sense of security, that's a good first step. Right. Awareness is key. But what about action, though? Like, what can we actually do to be more proactive about our own online security? Yeah. So first and foremost, yeah. don't let this scare you into being passive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. You actually have more control than you might think. Okay, good. Um, one of the simplest yet most effective things you can do is enable two-factor authentication wherever possible. Two-factor. So that's the thing where they send a code to your phone or whatever. Exactly. But, it adds that extra layer of security by requiring not just your password, but also something unique that only you have access to, like your phone. So that way, even if someone gets a hold of your password, they can't get into your account without that second factor. Okay, that makes sense. It's like a double lock on your front door. Exactly. What else? Be proactive. Okay. Don't wait for an alert to, like, start thinking about your security, you know? Right. Make it a habit to regularly review your account activity. Most online platforms let you see when and where your account's been accessed. Yeah. And if you see anything suspicious, report it immediately. So it's like checking your bank statements, but for your digital life. Exactly. Good advice. Any other parting words of wisdom for us as we navigate this digital minefield? Yeah, just remember that security is a shared responsibility, right? Yeah. Companies need to be more transparent. They need to be more proactive. But we also need to take an active role in protecting ourselves. So, you know, don't be afraid to ask questions. Do your research. Stay informed about the latest threats. So much to think about. It's easy to feel overwhelmed by it all, but uh, this has been really, really helpful, I think. We've learned those vague security alerts. They might not be as helpful as they seem. And uh, we've explored ways to be more proactive about our own online security. Really, it comes down to awareness, action, and taking control of our digital lives. And that, my friend, is a deep dive. Well, yeah. dived.